Hey friend, in this video, I'm gonna be sharing my journey as a professional artist. So if you haven't been around this channel for very long or you don't follow me on Instagram, at Jenna Rainey, I have been at this thing for now 10, a little over 10 years or something. Um, I, in fall, in the fall-ish time of 2012, my husband's brother was getting married to my roommate in college and they asked me because I'd had decent handwriting to do like place cards and different things for their wedding. Before that, I didn't go to art school. I didn't really think that I was creative or, you know, was an artist. That definitely lit a spark in me. I loved lettering at this point. I kind of became obsessed with looking online at different lettering artists or graphic design artists and just learning what I could about lettering. Um, I started painting. I was working a day job that I absolutely hated and it was sucking my soul out of my body and I just couldn't do it. I only worked there for a few short months, but every second that I was at that day job, I was thinking about art. I was wanting to do art things. And I was thinking about it on my lunch break. I was thinking about it on my commute to work. I was thinking about it on my commute back from work. And when I would get back from work, I would literally paint all night long, pretty much until I couldn't stand anymore. So I was obsessed. And in January of 2013, really soon after starting my day job, I opened an Etsy shop because John, my husband was like, eh, let's just see what happens if you post your work on Instagram or let's just see what happens if you open an Etsy shop uh, and hopefully your mom and like other people buy it. Mom definitely did and a couple other people bought some stuff. So I opened an Etsy shop in 2013 and um, slow trickles <laughs> of sales, very incredibly slow trickles of sales because I had no background in business no background in art. I didn't know what to ship things in. I didn't know anything about SEO and search engine stuff. So now I've learned a ton about it and I actually teach creatives search engine optimization and other business stuff because I've just learned a ton. But in those early days, I just was doing it because it was fun. I was obsessed with it. It felt like fun and exciting to me to have this Etsy shop. Fast forward to about July of 2013, I got my very first wedding client. So I started off doing lettering for some place cards and I had some friends here and there ask me to do some other stuff for their, for their weddings, like lettering some vows or lettering some song lyrics that were being sung during the ceremony that people could hold on to or whatever. And then it kind of just through word of mouth spread until this one particular bride reached out to me. She just got engaged and was wondering if I could design their entire wedding paper suite. So the invitations, the save the dates, and not just letter envelopes, not just letter place cards, but literally design and print all the things and mail them out to the people. I had never opened a uh, Adobe program before. I didn't know how Photoshop worked. I didn't know how Illustrator worked. I had no idea what different printing methods and how to prep files for different print printing methods like letterpress and foil and digital and what the differences were. I didn't know where to order paper. I didn't know nothing. And so that first job actually I got fired from because uh, the envelope color was too light with the light gold color that we had. And so the mailman sent them all back to the couple because he couldn't read them. Um, just being the person that I am, I kept going. I kept, I kept, uh, and I think one of the most important lessons, especially at that time for me was even when you make mistakes to always find the lesson. I don't do wedding stationery anymore, but I started off doing wedding stationery and I did that for about five years. I was able to grow that business to uh, revenue making six figures a year. I was published in Brides Magazine and Martha Stewart Weddings and Vogue and whatnot with, with my client jobs, with designing wedding stationery. I got so good at it to a point that I just became really bored. Um, you know, we were cutting leather doing die cuts on leather and doing crazy signage like decals on dance floors of people's branded logo that I would design. And so I was doing some really crazy stuff for weddings and it was fun. A lot of it was fun, but I just felt like there needed to be more. And I always had this passion for teaching. I taught piano growing up to little kids and I knew I loved teaching. And simultaneously between building my wedding stationery business, I was also teaching almost every weekend I was teaching in-person watercolor and in-person calligraphy workshops. And I loved it. It was allowing me to travel. I was able to eventually, you know, travel in the local area in Southern California, all the way up to LA, and then eventually San Francisco. Then eventually we were 
traveling to New York and Texas and all these other fun places I'd never been before. And it was able to at least pay for the trip um, and bring my husband along with me to help set up and tear down and all this stuff. But I, while I was building my wedding stationery business, I was teaching on the side and posting my work on Instagram. And my account was just taking fire. Every video I would post would get millions of views. I was getting thousands of followers a week on my Instagram. And, um, you know, this was about two to three years into my business. And so it was like a slow burn for the first year or so. And then it just took off on Instagram and, um, people became more obsessed with creative in-person workshops. And so I was teaching a lot more and booking out and selling out all of my workshops on the weekends. And eventually I started slowly handing off a lot of my design jobs for weddings to my assistant, Brooke, who still has that business. It's called Monvoir. I started my business, called it this French name. That means nothing to French people, but it sounded cute. And I started teaching more and I started teaching online. And Britain Co., which is a media, media company based in San Francisco, found me on Instagram somehow and decided they wanted me to teach an introduction to watercolor online class. So that was my first little toes dipped in the water of teaching online. That was back in 2015. And so I taught that online class with Britain Co and I caught the online teaching bug. So from there I taught two more classes with Britain Co. And then in 2018, I launched my very own online signature course where I taught people how to design wedding stationery and how to work with custom wedding stationery clients. I launched that course in 2018 and it's called Pen to Press. So I built the Kajabi page, the back, back end page. I created the, the email funnels for the sales sequence. I launched it. I figured out how to accept payments of credit cards on my website and all of that was done. I didn't have an assistant. I didn't have, I mean, John at the time, I think was helping me with my emails because I hate writing emails. Um, but that was my first endeavor in launching my own signature courses. And from there I've launched brand plus brand because I gradually was working out of wedding stationery and handing it off to Brooke and starting to license my work, which is basically getting your work on product through manufacturing companies or working with retail companies. And so I teamed up with licensing agent, Julie Turkel. So we created and launched brand plus brand, which is an online course on licensing and surface pattern design because I was simultaneously getting into licensing. I've had my work in Staples. I had an end cap with Blue Sky Planners where I had a bunch of different calendars and planners on an end cap on an aisle in Staples. I've had my work in Target. I've worked with Toki Mats, a lot of baby products where my work is featured on their products. They manufacture it, no overhead for me. So I love teaching artists how they can get into passive income through my course, Brand Plus Brand. And since then I've had other courses like an SEO course, an email marketing course, et cetera, all while simultaneously starting a YouTube three and a half years ago or something at the time of this video is being recorded and teaching and still pursuing my love for teaching and um, taking what I love to do, which is art and watercolor and giving it to people who um, are maybe new to the medium or need some more tips and they're more intermediate or advanced or whatever. And so we launched our YouTube channel and John came on with me full time and is my video guy and my editing of the videos guy um, for all things YouTube and now online courses. And so that was about three and a half ish years ago, basically right after we had our son Miles, um, we launched the YouTube channel and it's since then grown to over 245 or something thousand subscribers and is now my biggest platform uh, social media wise. Um, it's bigger than Instagram, which was always shocking to me because Instagram was always my thing and it was growing so rapidly and then it just went because algorithms. So anyways, now YouTube is my biggest platform and I love teaching on YouTube. I love getting to interact with the community on here through comments and engaging with you all. And then also on my Patreon, which is my monthly art exclusive tutorial subscription thing that we have on my Patreon. Oh, a big piece of what I've done over the last decade is between like right before I started licensing my work towards the tail end of me doing wedding stuff and I was teaching watercolor on the weekends, I got signed with 10 Speed Press for them to publish my book, Everyday Watercolor. So that is when I started writing and pitching my first ever book idea, Everyday Watercolor. 
and 10 Speed Press, which is an imprint of Penguin Random House, picked it up, which is crazy because I was kind of new, but I learned a lot and uh, published the book in 2017. I went on a book tour that took my uh, workshops, my watercolor workshops and book signings all over the world. And then also two years or around 2000, March 2018 or something like that, or fall 2018, I launched my second book, came out with my second book, Everyday Watercolor Flowers. And since then, I've also released Everyday Watercolor Sketchbook. I'm working on my third Everyday Watercolor book called Everyday Watercolor Seashores that comes out March 2024. And so I've kind of had the wedding stationery thing that I handed off and now teach um, other artists if they're wanting to pursue a career in wedding stationery through pen to press and I do licensing write my books and mostly teach because that is something that I feel like is my superpower is teaching I absolutely love teaching it's my greatest passion showing people and breaking down the steps in a more visual way in a more simplified way than just like look at it and sketch it or look at it and paint it or whatever. So that's an overview of my journey. I went from hobby artist painting at my kitchen table, just obsessed with this art thing to launching an Etsy shop and selling prints. And then that gradually led me into the wedding business and designing full invitation suites and save the dates and addressing envelopes and doing all this crazy stuff with paper. And then in between that, I was teaching in-person workshops. In-person workshops are a great way for artists to make money as well and to get their feet wet with teaching and see if that's something that is for them or not for them. And then I launched into books and online courses and online teaching and that really lit a fire under me, became something that I was super duper passionate about. It also was huge training in the online world. I feel like I was able to really latch on to that and how it works and SEO and email marketing and stuff. And so being able to simultaneously feed my love of business and how it works and understanding the online business world and also reaching people and giving and providing impact in people's lives. So that is kind of an overview of what my journey has been like. If you are maybe day one, you're still at your kitchen table, you know, painting and it's a hobby and maybe you wanna become a professional artist, I wanna encourage you that obviously looking at my Instagram now or my YouTube now or my blog or whatever and thinking, oh, why is it taking me so long? Why can't I have a business that looks like this? Or I wish my business looked like this or I wish it was moving kind of further along. Just remember this took me 10 years to build and a lot of mistakes. And those mistakes taught me a lot of lessons and helped kind of build this grit or hard working mentality that I have um, that has carried me through the 10 years that I've been in business to help me grow, to help me develop so that I'm not staying stuck or not throwing in the towel too early. And so it really takes a lot of patience if you are wanting to pursue being a professional artist. It takes a lot of being very self-aware, being aware of the industry that you're in and always kind of trying to be on your toes and pivot where you need to because my business has come up against a lot of walls where I could have just stopped and thrown in the towel and said, okay, well, I guess, I guess that's it. I guess we're done here. Um, but if you're able to stay on your toes and pivot and make changes where you need to make changes, receive feedback and implement that feedback to improve what you do, then I guarantee you, you'll be just fine. As a professional artist, as any business owner in any industry, it's really important that you are always keeping your eyes open and listening to your guidance system, listening to your intuition and, and reminding yourself that it does take a lot of work and sometimes it takes years of work to get to that level where you're ready to take the next step. So there you have it. There is my whole journey. Obviously there's a lot of stuff in between. Let me know in the comments below what was maybe surprising for you or maybe a takeaway for you. Are you a professional artist or wanna be one? I would love to hear in the comments below. And if you wanna take your art level or art journey to another level, make sure you join my Patreon where I'm sharing two monthly exclusive tutorial tutorials and live art classes. We also have a art community there where people are, people are sharing their work and getting feedback and getting to know each other. And then my course, The Art Within, is really gonna take your artwork to the next level by helping you develop your style, understand the foundations of art and tapping into flow state. As always, thank you so much for watching these videos, for hitting like on our videos, and for subscribing to this channel. It means the world to me. And I'll see you in the next video.